So this will be my second Giants mock draft video. The first one was probably over a month ago. I think I had Denzel Mims in the sixth round, which obviously will not be the case anymore because he's probably a late first, early second round pick. So this one will be more realistic. I can promise that. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. So before even drafting a player, I think the best thing to do with the Giants situation this year is to trade back, obviously. I've said that for a while now. So I think a team that could trade with is the Los Angeles Chargers, and I would have the pick as the Giants getting the 6th overall pick, the 37th overall pick in round 2, and a 2021 second round pick. So some of you might say you need more than that or something like that, but honestly, like that's a pretty fair trade to move back two spots in my opinion. Like You can try to rob them, but I'm trying to be realistic here. So... We don't know who the Chargers want. There's rumors that they like Herbert. They don't like Herbert. Of course, Tua Tunga Bailoa. I'm actually getting good at that name now. Tunga Bailoa. Getting good at it. But um, there's rumors they can get one of those two guys. And, you know, why would they do this? It makes sense because, you know, they have Tyrod Taylor as their starting quarterback right now. It makes a lot of sense to draft a quarterback for them. And, you know, they can jump Miami, who also needs a quarterback. So Miami right now is pick number five. The Chargers are pick number six. So if they will go from six to four, you take away a team of possibly taking their guy a quarterback so i think this trade makes a lot of sense i think it's fair and it would definitely benefit the giants so that's when i'm gonna, I'm gonna be going off this trade based off this mock draft so round one pick number six now overall i have it as jedrick wills jr the offensive tackle for alabama so you guys know I've had Andrew Thomas throughout the entire offseason, but now I'm kind of leaning towards Cedric Willis because I feel he is the quote-unquote safest guy and probably like the best pass protector. Not probably. I think he is the best pass protector out of the big four of the offensive tackles in this class. So I think he's the most NFL-ready right now, best pass blocker. I think he has the least amount of risk as compared to Tristan Wirfs, Makai Becton, obviously, and even Andrew Thomas, who has you know some problems with his hands. So I do think they can fix that, but his versatility, he's really good he can go from left tackle to right tackle i'm sure a lot of guys in this class can but i know jedrick wills definitely can i think he's underrated as a uh, run blocker i think a lot of people only talk about his pass blocking but a very good run blocker as well in my opinion very smart and uh, instinctual player that's underrated about him as well and as i said most consistent player i think he has better hands than uh, makai becton and andrew thomas and you know the one negative about him is he doesn't play with like that nastiness that like tristan Wirfs or makai becton or andrew thomas have so when you're talking about being just really good technique wise i think jedrick wills has it all so that's really what i have to say about that and some notes about it so i have been consistent with andrew thomas and I think the Giants, especially with Dave Gettleman with his job basically on the line, basically on the hot seat, he knows if the Giants have a rough year next year, he's probably gone. So why not take the most NFL-ready and safest offensive tackle pick that they have? You can argue Isaiah Simmons as well because that's another very safe pick. But look, if Gettleman took <clears throat> Makai Becton, I would not be surprised by it. But part of me would because that's a pick that... It's a developmental pick. It's not really like a day one type guy, even though he will be a day one starter, Makai Becton, especially if he's drafted in the top 10 or so. I just don't think he'll be as NFL ready as Jedrick Wills would be. So I think this would be the right pick. I wouldn't be mad if it was Andrew Thomas, obviously. I'd be thrilled about that. But, you know, even Tristan Wirfs, I can live with. I'm not as high on Wirfs as some other people are. But if it's Wills, if it's Thomas, I'm very happy about it. Wirfs, I'm okay with it. Becton, not so much. I think that's more of a project. I would not take him sixth overall, fourth overall, whatever it is, fifth overall if they trade there. So for me, I think right now the safest guy would be Jedrick Wills, sixth overall. So if this trade was made, the Giants would have two back-to-back -back picks early in the second round, which just sounds fantastic. I would be I would be in love with that. That is a great idea to have two early second round picks back-to-back. -back. That would be great. So hopefully this trade actually goes through. This is not just hopefully a, uh, a YouTube thing. I hope this really happens. So number 36, which is the Giants pick, I would have Antoine Winfield Jr., a guy I talked about in a previous video for round two options, 5'9", 203. That's the size limitations things. But outside of that, I think he's a phenomenal player. Had seven interceptions last year. Amazing football IQ. I talked about how his dad played in the NFL for a long time. He basically grew up studying film because that's what he'd do with his dad. It was a very cool thing to read. I read a whole article about it. So he's a great ball hawk, center field type player. That's just great for this modern day NFL. I think his tackling is pretty good. I mean, he might miss sometimes. He kind of goes low with his head sometimes, but that can be fixed. I think he's fine there and does have the ability to um, cover 
cover some tight ends and running backs if it's needed to. So I know being 5'9", going against like a, a Travis Kelsey or George Kittle type might be a bit too much for him, but we'll see how he fares in those matchups. But he can't be worse than what we had here, obviously. So I do think there are some negatives here. He did have a hamstring and foot injury issue in 2017, 2018. He was healthy last year, which is good news for him. And some people say he's undersized. So I think as compared to Antoine Buffet, this is a night and day difference. He'd be a much better player, obviously a lot younger. I don't like to be mean to Buffet. I think he had a good career, but obviously last year we did not see a good version of Antoine Buffet. So the notes for this one, the Giants struggled mightily to fill the free safety position last year with a clearly diminished Antoine Buffet. And um, now if they draft um, Antoine Winfield Jr., they can move Julian Love to his natural position, which is usually outside corner. They can try slot corner. I probably would rather have him outside but we'll see i know they have bradbury and they have deandre baker as well but if there's like a third cornerback spot on the outside that could be julian love we'll see what type of plans they have for him next year but this move will make a lot of sense they have a need there i think winfield's gonna be a very good nfl pro as long as he stays healthy that's a big issue obviously and you know people talk about the size limitations and stuff like that but i'm sure tyron matthew's not much smaller than he is so they got to be somewhere similar i think this guy has great instincts and would be perfect for the modern day nfl with a lot of deep ball passes and stuff like that so he's the type of safety that quarterbacks will fear because if you throw a ball deep and it's you know got a high safety being Antoine Winfield Jr. it might be an interception so I would love this pick I think it'd be great and uh, that's what I have for number 36 overall. So pick number 37, the very next pick, I would have the center Tyler Biotish from Wisconsin. And I'm going to have some mixed reviews for this one. I already know there's people out there that love this guy. There's people that think he should be like a third or fourth rounder. So I really don't know where everyone stands on this guy. I'm one of those people that really likes him, so I have him going early second round. Some people might call me crazy for that, but he's 6'4", 3'14", never missed a game at Wisconsin. That's another weird part. When I ask people, I literally posted on Twitter, I was like, why don't people like this Tyler Biotish guy? I just watched him, looks really good, and then people were saying he's injury prone. I'm like, all right, well, he never missed a game, but did play through some injuries. I'll admit that he had an AC joint injury in the offseason, had another injury, I forget what it was. It was one to repair his hip, so two surgeries already. One of them was pretty easy, but the other one on the hip, I guess, is pretty severe. But he came back from it and played every game, so I'm not too concerned about it. He's consistent consistent in every rep. He's not, like, the greatest athlete of all time, but, like, he would always get the job done when I watched him play. Um, I think his technique is really good. He's a really good run blocker in my mind. He does enough in the pass blocking game as well. He's not great at it, but he does enough. He doesn't really get beat too often. Won the Remington Award for the honor the best uh, center in the nation in 2019. So that's really cool for him. And as I said, the negatives, I mean, he had the two surgeries, the two injuries, but look, in terms of him as a player overall, if he stays healthy, I know I said the same thing about Antoine Winfield Jr., but if he stays healthy, he'll be a very solid center in the NFL for a long time, in my opinion. I don't really have the concerns about him that other people have. I know he's not the best athlete out there, but I do think he gets the job done and still has technique that's good enough to get it done in the NFL. So... Here's the notes about him. He should be a day one starter in the NFL, especially if he goes to the Giants. This would be a noticeable upgrade over John Jalapio or Spencer Pulley. Um, and with the Wills pick earlier, the Giants would definitely solidify their offensive line and have massive improvements. So you're talking about, you know, Nate Solder at left tackle or uh, Jedrick Wills, however you want to put it. Will Hernandez and then Tyler Biotish, Kevin Zeitler, and then Wills or Solder or Ken Fleming. Like, this would be a much better offensive line. I still have concerns about one of the tackle spots because, yes, it's still going to be Solder or possibly Ken Fleming. So that's definitely concerning. But they're moving it in the right direction. So if an offensive line, if you add Wills and you add Biotish, it just makes this offensive line much better. I don't have the concerns about Biotish that other people have. I think if he stays healthy, he'll be fine. A very good NFL starter. So that would be my pick for number. 37. For our third round comp pick, which I believe is 99 overall, I thought it was 100, but I guess it's 99. That's what the website said for the Giants, at least. So I have him taking cornerback Darnay Holmes from UCLA. So in my first mock draft, some people commented, maybe one or two people said, check out Darnay Holmes. And when I watched him, I was like, yeah, this guy's actually really good and can fit a big need for this team because he is the perfect build for a slot cornerback. So let's get into him. He's 5'10", 195 at a 4.48 40. Could be the slot corner the Giants need. Very very physical on defense. Don't let his size fool you. This guy's very physical, can stop the run if needed. He, lay, he lays out some big hits sometimes too when I watched him play. So that was, you know, don't underestimate him. I think he's really good in man coverage, has really good football IQ, athleticism, all that stuff that a slot cornerback needs. 
he has really good hips. He just moves side to side very easily. He can turn his body very easily, which is what you need in the slot. Can be a very good kick returner as well. He's had some good moments at UCLA with kick returns. Not really the reason you would draft a guy, but at least it's a positive. Negatives are he's probably, you know, he has too many limitations to play outside cornerback. I don't see that happening. So I think he's more of just a, a slot cornerback type guy, a nickel defense type guy. But in today's NFL, you need that. You need people to guard the you know, the Cole Beasley's, the Julian Edelman's of the world, guys like that, people that'll just kill you on third down and shorts. And if you have a guy like Darnay Holmes who can possibly possibly be a shutdown slot corner, that would be tremendous for your defense, obviously. So the Giants, of course, last year just had a massive issue. If you look at the notes, they had a massive issue with their um, slot cornerback position with Grant Haley and the uh, the rookie Corey Ballantyne. So they had a lot of issues there. And as for Darnay Holmes, I mean, he's praised for his work ethic and his lead by example personality if you listen to what his coaches say about him his teammates as well they love this guy but he's more than just a lot of cliches he's a very good player in my opinion not sure if he'd be on the board at this point but even if he's gone I like Kayvon Wallace from Clemson as well two guys that are pretty similar I think Wallace can he's listed as a safety but can definitely play slot cornerback if needed so if it's Kayvon Wallace if it's Darnay Holmes I'll be satisfied with this pick of course there's a lot of other good players that that should be on the board here but for the Giants they need to address the slot cornerback position because right now they still don't have anybody. I don't want to go into next year with Corey Ballantyne, Grant Haley, guys like that trying to man down that position. So hopefully, whether it's the second, third, fourth round, they take somebody that can be a good stock corner for them. So I have them taking Darnay Holmes, number 99 overall. For round four, pick number 110, I have them taking Travis Gibson, the listed as defensive end for Tulsa. He's 6'3", 261, 25 bench reps at the combine, which is not too bad. I believe he was severely misused at Tulsa. He was used as a defensive end, sometimes even playing D-tackle, playing inside the tackles. That's not what he should be used as. He was in a three-point stance a lot. I think this guy has outside linebacker written all over him. He should be in a two-point stance, playing outside the tackles. So I do think they really misused him, and that might uh, um, drop his draft stock and the Giants might get a steal here. Whichever team gets him might get a steal here. So he still had a pretty good season though. Had eight sacks, two forced fumbles in 2019, 15 tackles for a loss. His numbers, if you look at them, he's gotten better every single season in college. So you love seeing that. He's already 23 years old. He might be a late bloomer, but to see that he's getting better every year is something you have to like. I mean, he put on a lot of weight to just even be a good defender in, the, uh, in college. I mean, this guy put on, I think, maybe 60 pounds since arriving to college. It was something crazy like that. So he definitely has a lot of potential, and I would definitely be on board with this pick. I mean, the Giants have taken shots in mid-rounds recently with Gettleman as GM, first being Lorenzo Carter, I believe, in round three, and then the other one being O'Shea and Zimenez, who I think was round three as well. So... Why not take another chance? This one's round four, but this guy's a you know a should be outside linebacker who has a lot of potential, and if he's used the right way, I think can be a very good NFL player. I'm not saying he will be, but he, at least he has that potential. And I think the Giants' coaching staff hopefully is a lot smarter than Tulsa's, and they can use him the right way. So if there's an injury to a you know a Kyler Fackrell or O'Shane Zimenez, Lorenzo Carter, I think Gibson can give you some really good snaps and a guy who's going to get better every year probably. I think that's the way he's trending at least. So this would be a pick I'm very satisfied with so my notes from you know I basically talked about already they had O'Shane Zimenez Lorenzo Carter I just think this would be a good pick here I think Alton Robinson from Syracuse would be another good pick here I did not list him but if they took him here I'd be fine with that two pretty similar players they have a lot of potential there's some you know weaknesses about them the negatives, I said he's probably not going to be a day one starter and sometimes gets you know out of his stance a bit late. I think that's something that you can change. I think if he's in, uh, in a two-point stance playing an outside linebacker, it'd be a lot better for him. But when you watch the film on him, sometimes he gets out of his stance a bit too late. So that's one bad thing I have to say about him. But I do think the reason he was not a second or third round surefire pick is because he was misused. I think he has a lot of potential, a lot of talent. So I think if he went to the right system and was used the right way, there'd be a good return on your investment. So that's why I have Trevor. Gibson going number 110 overall round four to the Giants. For round five, pick number 150, I have Jack Driscoll, the right tackle for Auburn. So he's 6'5", 306, had a 5.02 40 time which was fourth best for offensive linemen at this combine. His broad jump was 114 inches, fifth best for offensive linemen at the combine. Really good feet. I think he has good lateral movement skills displays good patience and squares up his blocks really well. So I think his technique is there. 
The negative about him, obviously, is not having the NFL-ready type body. He's not a super athletic type of guy and definitely needs to get stronger in a lot of scouts' opinions. So this is a guy that definitely is not going to be a day one starter, but I do believe if you give him a full off season or a full season even to just work out and get even stronger, work with our new uh, offensive line coach, Mark Colombo, it might be a really good investment for the Giants. He might be a future option here. <clears throat> the notes here are very long, but basically to sum it up, Nate Solder is going to be here one more year. I don't really see a way the Giants bring him back for 2021. They just The contract makes no sense. He would have to play out of his mind this year to take him back for 2021. And also Cam Fleming's on a one-year contract. So after next year, the Giants don't really have a right tackle option. So if they can groom and work up Jack Driscoll, who definitely has all the technique skills you would want, just not an NFL-ready body type, if you give him a full year, even a year and a half basically from when you draft him, give him a year and a half to work up to be a starter in 2021 it might be a really good idea so that's what i would have to say about him um some people might say nick gates i mean nick gates has said before definitely prefers to play guard i mean he was playing tackle in college but in an interview he said he would rather play guard just feels more comfortable there there's less room for error as he put it so i think nick gates has a future regard for this team not sure about tackle so jack driscoll i know he's going to be like the third string tackle or even fourth string tackle on this team but it's not the worst investment in the world because two guys and cam fleming and nate solder are going to be gone in 2021 most likely so why not try to get a guy now especially on a rookie contract to be your future right tackle i feel like it's not the worst idea in the world so um another pick I, I could see them making here that i would like at least is jj taylor the arizona running back who i think can replace Dion lewis after this season so taylor's like five five i believe he doesn't weigh a lot but he is very fun to watch i know it's a stupid term everyone says it but he's fun to watch he's like kind of like darren sproles in a way i mean some people say Tariq cohen i don't think he has the explosiveness that Tariq cohen has but he's like He's 5'5 and just tries to run people over. Like He tries to truck people. I love how he doesn't even care how big he is and whatever. He just, just plays really good running back. It really doesn't matter. So I love that guy's tenacity and stuff like that. But I think the Giants right now, they're pretty good at running back, of course, with Saquon, Deion Lewis. So they might go for the mid-round running back next year, hopefully. I don't know. I just hit that. But next year, hopefully. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But I think Jack Driscoll would be a good pick here. He's a guy who went to UMass from 2015 and 2017, transferred to Auburn 2018, 2019, had a couple of good seasons there, especially in 2019. So, you know, he's not physically gifted, as I said, but definitely has all the techni technique you would want to be a starter in the NFL. But if he gets his body right and just works out, get stronger can be a very good option at right tackle in the future so that's why i have him for pick number 150 in round five so i have not picked a wide receiver yet which might be surprising to some people but in round six i had ben victor from ohio state Round six, pick number 183, going to the Giants, 6'4", 198, had a 4'6", 40 time, 35 inch vertical, 128 inches on the broad jump, and he was buried on the depth chart, honestly. I mean, there's a lot of good players in front of him. There was, you know, Terry McLaurin, guys like that. There was Curtis Samuel at one point, um, Paris Campbell, and a lot, of good, uh, a lot of good underclassmen at wide receiver for Ohio State. So I think he only started in one year, which was last year, and had a pretty good season of 35 receptions, 573 yards, six touchdowns touchdowns and a lot of recent Ohio State receivers have been really good especially Terry McLaurin looking back and you know the wide receivers coach Brian Hartline who used to be in the NFL I don't know what he's been doing over there but whatever he's doing is working because a lot of Ohio State receivers have been very good recently so that's another good thing about him so he definitely has a huge catch radius and makes some very tough contested catches, which I like. He's not afraid to catch the ball in traffic. He can make some people miss. Has a pretty good juke move as well. So, you know, he's not just like a 6'4 statue who's just going to catch the ball and go down. He's pretty good after the catch, but... The negatives are, you know, he does have some issues with press coverage that might be an issue in the NFL, especially against bigger, more physical corners and doesn't have incredible quickness either. So, you know, a, a 4 six forty isn't awful, but it's not that great either. He's not going to be like... You know, um, I do have AJ Green listed down here. AJ Green was definitely a lot more explosive, but when you compare when you compare Victor's combine to AJ Green, he did beat him in the broad jump and the vertical jump. So, not saying he's AJ Green. He's definitely not even close to AJ Green, but at least he has some measurables and some combine things that are a little bit better than him. So, you know, that's something good. But he does not have the hands or explosiveness that AJ Green has. And yes, Victor does have some drop issues, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not like a terrible drop issue. So. 
I think he would be a nice fit here because the Giants right now have one outside receiver being Darius Slayton. So, you know, there's really nobody else on the depth chart that can really be an outside receiver. They, they've tried to make Sterling Shepard an outside receiver. They signed Golden Tate, who's always going to be a slot guy. I and mean, putting Golden Tate on the outside would definitely be a waste in my mind. So he'll be the slot guy. Sterling Shepard's going to try to be an outside receiver. If he gets hurt or gets concussed again, you're going to need a guy to step in. And maybe Benjamin Victor can be that guy. Maybe they draft someone a bit earlier. That would not shock me either. I know people love Chase Claypool, who I do think can still play tight end. But we'll see if he, you know, we'll see whatever team drafts him, what they want to do with him. But that's an option as well. There's a lot of good receivers in this draft. So I would not be surprised if the Giants took one like rounds three or four. So it's a possibility. But I do think they have bigger needs right now. So that's why I put the receiver last. So I'm not going to do the seventh round picks. As I always say, that's kind of pointless it's just you know i'm not gonna get it right so there's no point and it's definitely harder to know who's gonna be there in the seventh round so i do believe the giants have four seventh round picks this year maybe they can use some of those to trade up into like the sixth or fifth round if that could work so that would be cool if they could do that but we'll see so i mean let me know what you guys think about this mock draft which other players should i have uh, should i have included in this draft that i did not have in here we're going to get some Isaiah Simmons arguments, and I'm going to hear some Tyler Biotis sucks comments and stuff like that. I'm already ready for it, so just let it go. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I probably will do another mock draft for this team, probably like maybe a week before the draft or something like that. We're still about three weeks away from the draft which is pretty exciting so you know let me know what you guys think about this one i'll probably do another one i want to do like an entire nfl mock draft like you know let me know if you guys are interested in that like you know possibly like a, a two round nfl mock for every team so like the first 60 picks or 64 picks i should say because there's 32 teams not 30 so um let me know what you think about that so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and i'll talk to you next time